and uh, please open our eyes and our ears so that we may grasp all that you would have us to teach through your servant um, and be with all of us and, and bless us all with your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, C.K. Lewis, for um, leading us in prayer. All right. Okay, well, let's um, take a look at, let's take a look at our lesson for tonight. Tonight we're studying 1 Kings chapters 12 through 22, and these are things we um, we'll look over. I don't know if we cover everything, but in our re in our outline, we're looking at chapter 12, re uh, Jeroboam's two golden calves. Jeroboam, he messed Israel up with building two golden calves. And uh, when he did that, he set Israel up for defeat and for downfall. Chapter 13, we're going to look at uh, one of... One of my um, favorite passages of Scripture, and I find it so peculiar, this passage of Scripture, uh, that a, a, a very serious, very serious man of God who loved the Lord would wind up uh, being destroyed the way he did. Uh, this man loved the Lord, but he made one big mistake. We're going to look at the man of God in chapter 13. We're going to look at two prophets meet in that same cha same chapter, and then the death of one of the prophets. Chapter 14, bad news for Jeroboam. Bad news for Jeroboam and Jeroboam's death. Chapter 15, we will look at Abijam and Asa. Then Asa's league with Syria. Asa was one of the good kings. We find that... Um, out of all the kings of Israel and and Judah, none <coughs> none of the kings of of Israel, the northern kingdom, were considered good. They were all corrupt. And out of the kings of the southern kingdom in Judah, only um, a handful were good kings: Asa, um, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah. And Josiah. Chapter 16, we're looking at Baasha in Israel. Well, you may say, who is Baasha? Well, we'll find out when we get to chapter 16. And then we're looking at division in Israel. Chapter 17, wicked king Ahab. One of the most wicked people ever to walk the face of the earth. And then the widow's cruise. She had a container uh, the widow's cruise, and um, she had a little bit of grain and a little bit of oil, and how God worked miracles with that. Then we're looking at, in chapter 17, Elisha, the Tishbite. He was from a place called Tishbe, a mighty man of God. <clears throat> More people talked about Elijah, Eli, uh, Elijah, the man of God. More people talked about Elijah than almost anyone else in Scripture. And then chapter 18, Elijah is here. Elijah's here. Uh-oh. When Elijah shows up, that means something's about to happen. We look at Elijah's challenge in uh, 1 Kings 18, and God's power revealed. Elijah showed up on Mount Carmel and uh, had a face-to-face -face confrontation with Ahab, for the first time in thirteen in in three years, first time in three years, and great things happen. Chapter nineteen, Jezebel's threat. Talking about a wicked woman, a wicked lady. Jezebel was just plain wicked. I mean, her blood was spelled W I C K E D. And then, uh, in this chapter nineteen, <coughs> Elijah chooses Elisha. To be his successor. Chapter 20. Ben-Hadad's boast. He boasted about something. And Syrian, the Syrians are defeated. And Ben-Hadad was sent away. Chapter 21. Naboth's vineyard. 
Naboth had a vineyard, and and um, Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard. Okay, reminds me of uh, uh, David wanting uh, a certain woman to be his wife, and the the husband was in the army. And we find throughout the Bible there are many episodes of greed and 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 covetousness, and how God dealt dealt with that. So, in chapter 21, Jezebel plotted against Nabal so that her husband can get Nabal's vineyard. Chapter 22, Ahab repents. He repents. Uh, but I don't think that repentance got him into heaven, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Everybody repenting ain't going to go to heaven. Uh, some people just get... Tired of getting caught, tired, tired of the same old, same old, and they get caught. But there, uh, to, in order to get to heaven, we must repent and turn away from sin and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus Christ was not on the earth at the time of Ahab, but pure repentance would mean turning your heart over to the Lord and surrendering your will to his will. And that's how people got saved. Uh, they got saved through faith. That's how Abraham got saved, through faith. Micaiah's prophecy, chapter 22. The death of Ahab, and then Jehoshaphat's reign. Can you imagine naming a son Jehoshaphat? But this man, Jehoshaphat, was a powerful man. He had a relationship with the Lord, as you'll see later in, in, in Chronicles. Uh, it was his relationship with the Lord that saved him and saved all of Jerusalem. Because one day Jehoshaphat woke up and he was surrounded by a whole, whole lot of Africans. He was surrounded by them. The nation was surrounded by them. And what Jehoshaphat did is an example, a lesson to all of us, how we ought to walk the walk. Not just talk the talk, but walk the walk and stay close to the Lord. God will deliver us from everything. God can deliver from the coronavirus. God, there's nothing too, too difficult, nothing impossible for God. So let's, I'll take a look at <coughs> chapter 12 of 1 Kings. And in chapter 12, uh, we see the, the main thing that happened in this chapter is that Jeroboam, who was established as king of the northern kingdom, that means ten tribes of the northern kingdom, he decided that he would make two golden calves for the people of the northern kingdom to worship. And he made them and, and told the people, these are your gods. And um, he placed them in two different cities. And he said, this is, these are the gods who brought you out of Egypt. He lied. Ladies and gentlemen, God said, thou shalt have no other god before me. And how easily people are deceived. Ladies and gentlemen, we must keep our eyes on the Lord God Almighty uh, through his Son, Jesus Christ, and trust in the Holy Spirit, because this spirit of deception is, is powerful. The spirit of delusion is powerful. And in the next chapter, we're going to see how the spirit of deception killed a man of God. The spirit of deception killed a mighty man of God. And so each of us, uh, I encourage each of you, walk with the Lord. Don't let anything separate us from the love of God. And be careful who you hang out with. Jeroboam caused the nation of Israel to backslide when he um, created two golden calves and said, Now, you don't have to go all the way to Jerusalem to worship God. You can worship him in uh, one of these two cities, and this is your God. And then he said, This is the God who brought you out of Egypt. What a lie, what a lie. And the people believed that. And as a result, many people were destroyed. Many people were destroyed. And um, 
the prophecy that went out on Jeroboam did come true. God fulfilled the prophecy. And one thing about prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, and when God gives a word, he's going to keep his word. God is faithful to keep his word. I'm pulling out my Dakes Bible, uh, my Bible by uh, Mr. Dakes. I mean, this Bible has so much reference material in it. It's my favorite Bible for reference Bible because I want to share some things with you that are in the um, in the Dakes Bible concerning chapter 13. <coughs> chapter 13 of 1 Kings says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of God unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And the man of God, verse 2, cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, Thus saith the Lord. He's crying out to the altar, ladies and gentlemen. O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt unto thee. This uh, is a prophecy against a to, uh, to the altar. Um, the man of God is crying unto the altar and says, a man will be born, a child will be born, his name will be Josiah, and on this very altar, this is the altar that Jeroboam built to uh, have the people sacrifice unto these golden calves, and, and uh, the prophet, the man of God, whose name we will never know, said, that a child would be born into the house of David. He calls him by name. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it, it was later on that Josiah was born, and this prophecy came true. And then and Josiah becomes one of the good kings, one of the good kings, uh, a mighty man of God, and says that, he will offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee. And in other words, Josiah is going to be such a mighty man of God, he's going to burn priests, the corrupt priests, on this very altar, Jeroboam. And that took place. And uh, prophecies go out, and um, people are so, I mean, people today are so quick to follow a so-called prophet. Be careful whom you follow. Be careful. And you can judge a prophet by whether or not what the prophet says comes true. Now, in this case, when this prophet cried unto the altar, uh, this uh, prophecy was not fulfilled for about another 300 years. It took about 300 years before this prophecy was fulfilled. But it was fulfilled. Okay, so this man... Um, before, um, gave the prophecy then there were miracles that followed this prophecy and then the man of God verse 7 and the Lord and the king said unto the man of God come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give thee a reward okay, was, okay so Jeroboam stretched his hand out unto the altar and his hand withered and he could not withdraw his hand. His hand withered, and, and he couldn't bring his hand back. And then when the man of God cried unto the Lord, God healed Jeroboam's hand. Ladies and gentlemen, God withered Jeroboam's hand and then restored his hand, but Jeroboam still did not repent. There are many people who see miracles. They have signs and wonders happening in their lives, but they go back to the same old, same old and keep on doing the things that grieve God. Jeroboam refused to repent after this miracle. And Jeroboam just said, you know, like people uh, blow us off, pray for me. They blow God off, pray for me, somebody. And so the King Jeroboam asked the man of God in verse 7, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. Now, a lot of preachers would have been glad to go to the White House. A lot of preachers would have been glad, glad to go to the prayer breakfast. A lot of people, preachers would be glad to go home with the president and get those rewards, get that paycheck. And we've got a whole, whole lot of folks in America 
looking for that paycheck. And they'll say anything and prophesy anything as long as they're getting that paycheck. I wasn't supposed to go there, but I did. Verse 8, And the man of God said unto the king, Listen, if thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So God told the prophet, he said, Don't go into anybody's house. Don't eat anybody's bread. Don't turn into anybody's house. Don't even go back to uh, uh, the same way you came. Verse 10, So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. So here we have this man of God, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know his name. A mighty man of God. He confronted Jeroboam and uh, God used this man of God to wither Jeroboam's arm, his hand, and then God used this man to heal Jeroboam. Jeroboam wanted to reward the prophet. You know, in those days, a lot of prophets looked for rewards. Uh, they were like uh, Balaam. They wanted some kind of reward for their prophecy, just like prophets today want a paycheck. They want an offering, an honorarium. And, and uh, the king said, Eva, come on home with me. Come on to the palace and eat a meal with me, and, and we have a celebration. But the man of God said, no, God told me not to go with anyone, not to go into anyone's house, not to turn into anyone's house, not to eat their bread, and not even to go back the same way that I came. This man was steadfast. He was, he was very uh, faithful to the Lord. But look, but look, starting in verse 11, I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit of time with uh, 1 Kings 13 because there's a lot in here and a lot we can learn. And, and, and we can all learn uh, to tighten up our walk with the Lord and be very, very careful. <clears throat> now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works <clears throat> that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Listen to this story, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 15, Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, and the old man said, the old man, listen to what the young prophet said. Then the old man said in verse 18, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please be careful whom you hang out with. Be careful who, who you associate with, even if the person is a prophet or a prophetess. Be careful. If, if Here's a rule of thumb, a rule of Scripture. If God speaks to you and you know it is God, honor God's Word. Honor God's Word. And, and, and I've been teaching for years, and I continue to teach people. If you're not sure whether you've heard from God, you go to God. You fast and pray. You go to God and make sure that the word you hear is of the Lord. Ask God to confirm his word if you're not sure. Be like Gideon. Put out a fleece. 
Make sure you know what God says. And when God speaks something to you, ladies and gentlemen, when God gives you a vision like he gave to Habakkuk, God said, write the vision that they who read it may run. If God gives you a word, write that word down. Keep a journal. Jackie Carter does a lot of journaling. Uh, my sister Jackie Hamilton, who's, who listens to these recordings and is in our school, she keeps a journal. And many of you keep journals. Journal what God said to you. Date the journal so that you have it before you. So that when someone comes to you like this old prophet came to this man of God and verse 18 Old prophet said, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Ladies and gentlemen, this old prophet was a liar. He was a liar. And, 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 and I want to share with you. Here's another thing I want to say to you. When you minister... Okay, Karen, you're in ministry, you're the associate pastor, uh, co-pastor, you're a co-pastor like Pastor Lisa Johnson and uh, Pastor Larry and pa Dr. Jean and so many, and Jackie Carter, uh, uh, God's using you in ministry, and, and, and Ryan and, and so many others, Tyrone and Brian and, and, and uh, uh, Christy Carpenter up in uh, Idaho and CK, God's using you after you minister. Remember this, you are very vulnerable. Every one of us is very vulnerable, particularly after we minister. Whether you're the guest speaker, whether you've done a missionary assignment, whether you've gone overseas for the Lord, uh, whether you've taken a, a loaf of bread to your neighbor, when you finish ministry, you and I are vulnerable, and we've got to be on the alert. That is why it is so important to obey God's instructions. God told this man, don't go home with anybody. Don't eat anybody's bread. Don't go into the city of, 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 of Bethel. Uh, I want you to go straight back, uh, but take a different route going back to where you came from. God gave him specific instructions. And here the, here's this, this prophet, this preacher, this pastor. And ladies and gentlemen, You've got to be alert because there are going to be many people, and these are uh, prophets, people uh, called by the Lord, and people will deceive you. Hey, hey, Doc, it's all right. Come on, Doc, come on, spend some time. Come on home with me. Meet my wife and the kids and spend the night with us. And then get, you know, you're tired, you worked hard, you labored, you ministered, so come on in and spend some time with us and then uh, go, go home in the morning. And, and so many people have been, have been duped by this, deceived by this, deceived by a lying spirit. And this old prophet said, I'm a man of God. I'm a prophet just like you. He said, and the angel of the Lord came to me and spoke to me and told me to bring you to my house. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is what I want, want to impress upon you. I believe this is, is what God wants to impress upon you. When God speaks to you, no what God says and do what God says and be obedient. Many people have lost their lives. Many have lost their anointing. Many have died in disobeying God. And the, the, the time, the time of, of that greatest challenge comes, ladies and gentlemen, is right after you minister, right after you preach on Sunday, right after you present the word, right after you go to the hospital and visit the sick, right after you uh, 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 cast out demons, right, at, right after you get somebody delivered. You and I are vulnerable. And, and that is when we need to draw even closer to the Lord. That is why years ago, years ago, and Jackie Carter will tell you, hey, Pastor Carter goes straight to bed uh, right after he finished preaching. Uh, and on Sunday morning, the online church, Jackie will tell you, hey, uh, when she comes home from uh, our local church, I'm in bed. I, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I learned how to do this years ago. Uh, Pastor Lisa Johnson, her husband, uh, Pastor Larry Johnson, they know me. I'm going home, and I'm going to bed, and I'm not going to stop by anybody's house. And I'm not. Uh, uh, years ago, uh, we used to go out to dinner, and then uh, I couldn't enjoy my dinner because, uh, you know, uh, 
and couldn't engage in small talk because if you go out to dinner, people are going to engage in a lot of small talk if you're with other people. And, 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 and it's these things uh, that corrupt the man or woman of God. And then temptations. There are all kinds of temptations out there. And many men and women are vulnerable to temptations. So I wanted to spend a little bit of extra time in this 13th chapter of First Kings because many a good believer, many a strong follower of the Lord has bit the dust because a lying prophet came to them after they finished ministering in the name of the Lord. And you've got jealous people out there, ladies and gentlemen, who look for an opportunity to bring you down. And many will say, well, the Lord sent me, and, and I've got a word for you, and, and, and you really preach today, Doc. And you really preach today, sister, and, 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 but the Lord sent me to minister to you because, you, you know, we all need ministering, and now let me pray for you. And then uh, in their prayer, uh, they, they, oh, they've got this word, the Lord said, for you to come home with me, and, uh, and I'll take care of you, spend the night with me. And many people have bit the dust, ladies and gentlemen because of a lying spirit from a lying prophet. And, and this thing puzzled me for many, many years and, and still puzzles me that uh, when I wonder, how can God allow a, 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 a very sincere person be deceived like this? But then I look back on my life and I see episodes where uh, I have been deceived. I've allowed myself to be deceived. And why? Because of disobedience to the Lord. And, and disobedience may come in the fact that uh, you want to please your spouse rather than please the Lord. Or you want to please your family rather than please the Lord. Well, let's go to uh, 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 Red Lobster uh, right at the church. Or let's, uh, the deacon say, hey, let's go to uh, 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 the Juicy Crab at the church and God has said no you better go home and go to bed and a lot of people have gotten sick a lot of people have gotten messed up a lot of people have lost their anointing uh, because they disobey God and 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 please man rather than please God so I just want you to spend some time with this 13th chapter and um, I, I, I spend more time with this chapter tonight than any other chapter and uh, so on the way home, on the way home, when the guy, when the, this, young, this young prophet, this man of God did decide, uh, even, no, even before he went home, God spoke through the old prophet and gave the old prophet a prophecy. And, and, and um, verse 21, and he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. This young prophet was killed by a lion, and his carcass was cast in the way. His body was laid out in the road, and the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. So the lying prophet said, it's the man of God who disobeyed the word of God. The lying prophet knew he was lying. Ladies and gentlemen, this passage of scripture is very puzzling. The man of God uh, disobeyed God's word and listened to the word that came from another prophet. Ladies and gentlemen, please be careful. Every, every prophecy, every word spoken to you, you need to weigh it. You need to test the Spirit by the Spirit. If God has said something to you or to me, 
let us hold on to what God has said and don't let anybody add to that prophecy or that word. Don't let anybody add to your instructions. But pay particular heed to what God has said to do. Okay, go on, on, I want to go down a little bit more in um, chapter 13. And the prophet, verse 29, And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave that he had prepared for himself. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. Yep, they, and they will say to you and me, if we disobey God, Alas, my brother, he was sure preached. She sure preached. Yeah, he was a man of God. She was a man of God. And, 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 and they will always remember, Yeah, but he disobeyed God. He disobeyed God. And it came to pass after he had... Um, buried him that he spake to his son saying when i am dead then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of god is buried lay my bones beside his bones for the saying which he cried by the word of the lord against the altar in bethel and against all the houses of the high places where which are in the cities of samaria shall surely come to pass my friends 348 years after this prophet prophesied against the altar of Jeroboam. 348 years later, the prophecy came true. And they took all the false prophets and burned them on that same altar that Jeroboam had made uh, for people to sacrifice to his golden calves. Very interesting, the information we get in the Bible, okay? And even throughout this, Jeroboam continued to persist in sin, and um, people be, continue to sin against the Lord. Let's take a little break, and any, are any questions, any comments about this old prophet and the, the, fall, the, 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 the young prophet and the false prophet who pulled him off course? Anyone want to comment on this? This is CK. CK. It seems like uh, repeatedly we see through these studies that if the per, you know, like the the prophet of God or whoever, um, when they were not sure if they would have just consulted with God and asked His direction, then they would have been set straight and they would not have sinned. Yes. 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 Yes, and do you see his point of vulnerability? Well, he he's believing somebody without um, having pure facts that it's from God, and the only way he knows it's from God is to ask God. Yes, 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 and he knew what God had said because he had told the king, "Oh no, I can't go back. I can't go to your palace. I'm under strict orders." And he even told this old prophet, "Oh no, I can't go to your house. God told me." But it was when, when, when the old prophet said, "But I'm a man of God. I'm a prophet just like you." And the angel of the Lord just appeared to me and told me to tell you, "Come to my house." He said, "God said, come to my house." We have to be careful, don't we, C.K. For sure. And it's, I think, you know, it seems like it was difficult back then, but it's even more difficult now. For me, it's very difficult um, without, you know, consulting with God which way and how to go and who to believe because today there's so much deception in the world. So much deception, CK, and so many voices. And so... Each of us, we have to be sure that we're sure that we're sure that we're doing the will of God. That is why it, it, there are times we just have to just humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and, 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 and say, say, hey, just say no. Say no to anybody and everybody until you're sure this is what God wants you to do. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not just preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to myself, too. We must be very sure. Anyone else want to comment on this? 
Yeah, I think that's why sometimes, um, and I'm going to get real personal, <laughs> I think that sometimes why you don't understand when I don't get real excited <laughs> when you tell me um, that God has spoken to you, and it's because, it's not because I don't believe you or anybody else for that matter, but it's like, okay, before I assume my role in this, I need to be sure that's what God wants me to do or what the role is he wants me to do. And I think so often we, like these two prophets, we don't go back and we don't con get confirmation from God that even though this is, this is what God told the prophet, don't go back, don't, don't go another way, don't go to the king's house, you take another road. And when he was confronted by the other prophet, then I think that's when he really should have sought God's confirmation as to whether or not this was a new directive or he should have continued on his way. And I think sometimes we, we get a little impatient because it, we need to go back and make sure that, okay, yeah, this is what God said to do. Now, I want you to come along with me, but before I come along, I've got to be sure that my role is the, what God wants it to be. Because God may tell me something else that goes along with that, but it may not be the exact same thing. Am I making sense? That crazy? Yes, you're making sense, and, okay. and, and, and I think you're speaking to a lot of husbands and wives, and, and, and um, we're, you and I, we, we, we may continue this conversation a little bit later. Um, you're saying several things, uh, and, and you're true. You're right. You need a confirmation uh, to go along with what God has said to me, and so we walk together, because how can two walk together unless they agree? Uh, mm -hmm. But in a lot of times, a lot of times, I think... Uh, the, the, the one God spoke to originally gets really crushed. And uh, praise God, it's not happening in our household, but it's happening in a lot of households. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, ministerial couples, there's a crushing time when God speaks to one and the other, because God didn't speak to me, the other won't go along with that. I've, I've been in situations like that uh, where God spoke to one and and the other, well, God didn't speak to me, so I ain't going. You know, I ain't. That is cr that is very very painful, uh, not only to a marriage but to a ministry. Many great movements of God have been thwarted or hindered because one person said, "Well, I didn't hear from God," and 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 it was just it's it's the way in which the person said it, it's the attitude. In other words, I know a lot of couples where if God doesn't speak to one. Uh, then he does, uh, that other person, who, whoever God speaks to, it doesn't matter. But hey, God didn't speak to me, and so I, you know, and so that's division. That's divisive. That's not of the Lord, okay? But uh, then yeah, what I you're also that's, saying is that's when that's when both parties, I think, have to actively consult God. Okay, they Lord, have to actively you, consult God. Right, but then, because, then because there's another dimension in, in, this min in this ministry together. And, you know, it's like, okay, God, this is, this is the vision. You know, you told me don't go this way. Now, this man is telling me that it's okay. I can come and, and sup with him and not take time to confirm that. And I think that's where, that's where he met his demise. That's where the he problem He met was. his demise. He yeah, met so his I demise. When we take time and we ask God, I want to be right. I want to be supportive. Tell me what my role is in this, in, in, in your, um, your direction. And well, I, I think, and I think missing, then that's when things come together. I think you're missing a, a major ingredient in this whole thing, Jackie. The second prophet had a lying spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. He had a lying spirit. Okay. And that's where that discernment comes in. That's well, the second prophet had a lying spirit, and the first prophet should have discerned. He should, he, uh, it, uh, it, it, he should have stuck with God's plan. Now, you know how I roll, Jackie. Uh -huh. Can I'm I gonna say do something? It. You know, I'm going to do what God says do anyhow. I'm going to do it. Uh, <laughs> but it's easier when two come into agreement. But the, the difference between 
Um, okay, I'll, I'll use you an example. The difference between you and this older prophet. The older prophet had a lying spirit. I mean, he was bent on telling a lie. He knew that he wasn't going to support this man of God because he had a lying spirit, probably jealousy and envy, everything else hooked up with that. Okay? But what, you, what you've done, you open up, and there are people online tonight. They have, many have experienced the same thing uh, where uh, a spouse may not have agreed or, or cl someone close to you may not have agreed. And then people have a motive for not agreeing. And then it, we're looking at this. There are people out there, hey, I don't care what God said to, to, to my husband, or I don't care what God said to my wife. If God don't speak to me first, I ain't, I ain't going to be a part of it. There are people bold enough out there to say that. Come on, come on, Pastor Lisa. Um, I had a, 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 it was about my conviction uh, when I got called into ministry. And when we had to stand before the board, uh, the board told me that, um, yeah, I know that God called you, but he called you to do this. I said, God didn't tell me that. I know who, whom I believe, and I know the voice of God, because I fought God a long time on this. And I said, he said, well, go upstairs, <laughs> go up to the altar and pray and seek to face you and your husband. Well, my husband knew God called me, and he knew what office he called me to. So I wasn't moved by what they said, because God told, showed me ahead of time what they was going to do. And so I went back down there. I said, no, God told me, and I'm standing on, my, I'm standing on what he told me, and I'm not moving. I, I can't. I can't move, move out of what he called me to. And so, and, and they said, well, you know, it's going to take, I don't care how long it takes. God knows. He called me, so who am I to say no to God? Who am I to choose you over God? I know what he said. We have to have a conviction and, you know, and stand upon the word because I really truly believe, you know, sometimes you got to chew up the meat and spit out the bones and, you know, if it's for you, it's for you, you know. But I know, I know God had called me to this ministry and called me to this position, and it doesn't matter what people say. I'd rather believe God than believe a man in Jesus' name. Praise God that your husband knew you're calling and stood by you. But there are a lot of people who, uh, uh, there, there are a lot of manipula manipulative things going on even in Christian marriages, even uh, in, in relationships among a, a pastor and his board or pastor, his close associates. And people try to shape you into doing what they want you to do or what they want is best. A lot of that's going on. So mm -hmm. we've opened up a whole another can, and uh, like Jackie said, get the confirmation, get the confirmation. Um, and and I, I like to say to to those of you, if you're in a situation and and God gives you a word, and your spouse hasn't is not on board, then um, you still you still uh, the ideal thing is to follow God, obey God, and what God said, and pray yeah. that God will open your spouse's eyes. Because uh, it's easier in a household when you're walking in agreement than when walking in, in, in disagreement or there's contention. Um, and in and, and many households, there is contention. And if, if God gives you a word, then uh, there are times you might have to go, God, do you want me to do this now? Or God, I've been getting opposition. Uh, my spouse doesn't see this and this and that. And and then there are times you just have to make a decision. Well, I'm I'm going the way God said do, and uh, I would rather be true to God than to try to please anybody else. Uh, the yeah. ideal situation is that husband and wife should walk together in agreement. If if God gives Jackie a word and I don't see it, then I have the responsibility. To go to God and say, God, is this what you want done? Is this of you? And, and, and work towards agreement because it's best to go in agreement. But if there's a schism, if there's a division, then um, that word of God. Now, here's another thing. What if, what if you say God gave you a word and Larry says, but God gave me this word, and that they're, they're in, 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 in juxtaposition. In other words, they're countering one another. Then that's when both uh, of the company need to stop, 
fast and pray and seek the Lord and truly seek the Lord. Right. And when there's true seeking of the Lord, God will reveal his will. Pride has a pride Pride has to go out the window, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> pride has destroyed many, not only many a marriage, many household, but pride has destroyed many ministries. Pride has prevented God from doing a lot of work uh, in areas where he wanted to bring about results. But that pride, so I've got to wrestle against pride and cast down that proud spirit, humble myself, and God gave us all. He, he said, and this is for every one of us. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. And then, um, here's, here's another thing of thoughts coming to me. If, if you're, you're married, and you're, let's say you've not been married that long, or you, even if you have been married long, and let's say God calls one to the ministry, that's a whole revolutionary change for a household. If one is called to the ministry, and what if the other is not even saved yet? Or then what if the other gets saved, but then there's a, a one is out there and one's back here lagging, and then how are you going to bring the two together? Okay, that is a problem with a lot of households. Uh, but my, my take on this is obey God at whatever whatever cost obey God. And we're seeing in this in, in this thirteenth chapter, this man did not obey God. He tried to please this old prophet and he, he fell for the okie doke. The old prophet told him a lie. And 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 I can imagine this old prophet came on him all religiously. Well Doc, you know, uh, I've been with God for a long time, and the Lord spoke to me and said, go find that man of God and bring him to your house and feed him, etc., etc." And it led to that man's demise. And so um, C.K., the young prophet, uh, lost his opportunity to seek God for confirmation, C.K. He didn't get confirmation, and he went based on the word. Come, and this is the thing that's confused me about this whole passage for many years this old prophet was given permission to tell a lie to the young prophet CK and and God knew about it and the old prophet knew he was lying and the young prophet didn't know he was lying and the young prophet fell for the okie doke it puzzles me to this day and uh, puzzles me to the point where I want to make sure and be sure and be sure that what I'm doing is of the Lord. And uh, if 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 uh, once I know it's of the Lord, I'm gonna st I'm gonna stick with it and go with it. But then then I'm not gonna boast about never being deceived because I have been deceived. I have been deceived on many occasions. But I thank God for His grace and mercy. Anyone else want to comment on this? Okay, so we're not going to finish a whole lot of chapters tonight, but we're, I think this chapter will, be, will help all, every one of us. Okay, uh, Dr. Jean Bratton, come on in. Hello, everyone. God bless you. God bless you too, Pastor Carter. Um, I was thinking about the, uh, the story of the prophets. I was just reading that on Monday as a matter of fact, and it's so important for people of God to follow God's instructions to a T and not deviate from them. Um, as I was reading this story, I said, wow, only God would know that a lion's on a prowl. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why he told the man to take another route on the way out and don't stop and talk to anybody. Just keep it moving. Only God would know that there's hidden danger that we may not be thinking about. But it is odd that in the story, when they found the young prophet, the lion was standing by the body, and so was his donkey. The lion the, wasn't the, even hungry, was he? No, just no. 
And then when you look at when you look at it, Dr. Jean, if the prophet if the young prophet had not spent the night with the old prophet and gone his way, he would not have met the lion. That's what I'm saying. Only God knows about dangers that okay. you know you know, seen and unseen, known and unknown to us. You know, only God would know that. That's why that, sometimes when I finish preaching on Sunday morning, I I, I go straight to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I go straight to bed. I ain't gonna answer my cell phone. I ain't gonna answer the home phone. I'm I'm going straight to bed because I know I'm vulnerable. Okay. <laughs> and if someone says right after I preach, "Hey, doc, I'm down here on I-75 and I I need a I need a jump." Hey, look, you call Triple A. <laughs> I just finished preach. You call Triple A. They'll come and give you a jump. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dr. Gene. Okay. Chapter 15, we have Abijam and Asa, and Asa's league with Syria. And um, um, Asa went into a, a um, pact with Syria that turned out, could have turned out, um, differently, but God had his hand on Asa. Chapter 16, we're looking at Baasha in Israel, and then divisions in Israel. Baasha, um, one of the wannabes to the throne in Israel. And um, I'm just going through this, okay? In 1519, there's a league between me and thee, Asa said, and between my father and thy father. Behold, I've sent unto thee a present of silver and gold. Come and break thy league with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And so this is Ben-Hadad uh, with King Asa. Now, Ben-Hadad was not a person to be trusted. And Asa uh, did not trust Ben-Hadad, but Asa, it was either... Ben Hadad or Baasha, um, and so sometimes a nation may go into a a league with another nation, uh, despite God's warning. And God had warned Israel many times not to enter into contracts or 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 defense leagues with other nations, and uh, that brought a lot of the kings of Israel down. Chapter seventeen. <clears throat> Elisha the Tishbite, Elisha the Tishbite, we've read his story many times, so we don't have to spend a whole lot of time with it, um, but when he first came on the scene, God told him to go to Ahab and tell him it won't rain, and for three and a half years it wouldn't rain, and so for three and a half years, Ahab's looking for, looking for Elijah, the guy who called this prophecy on the land and caused all this uh, destruction. And then um, Elijah heard from the Lord, and the Lord said, Go and find Ahab, present yourself to him. And so uh, Elijah meets Ahab on Mount Carmel, and they have this uh, contest uh, where Elijah said, uh, um, You make your sacrifice and call on your God, and, and the God that answers with fire, he is the Lord. Okay, um, and so God proved himself through Elijah on that uh, experience. And Elijah slaughtered 850 prophets of Baal and Ahab. Chapter 18, and here's another thing. After your high experiences, your, your, your victories, then there's a time when, 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 when if you're not alert, just like the the young prophet was not alert when he went to the old prophet's house. <clears throat> after a great victory, after you raise all that money for Men's Day or Women's Day or pay off that bill or pay off that mortgage, uh, pastors and church workers, believers, go in the prayer, seek the Lord, humble yourselves, because any time you, you experience a great victory in the Lord, you can expect a challenge to come. Verse chapter 18, um, the challenge comes when Jezebel uh, 
after chapter 18, chapter 19, Jezebel makes some threats and, and, and sent out a word. When, when Ahab told Jezebel what happened and all her prophets were killed, and Jezebel sent out a word for Elijah. Well, if by this time tomorrow uh, you're not dead like my prophets are, then something's wrong. And so Elijah fled for his life. And there are times, ladies and gentlemen, when you and I have to flee, run for our lives. Yes, you mighty men and women of God, there are times when we get weak and we run for our lives. There are times when the anointing is not always upon us. And learn when you're weak and learn when you're strong in the Lord and, and, and learn how, how, to, how to operate in those situations. Um, pray, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. David even told us in, in one of the Psalms, he said, When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And David even, David even admitted, and he knew from personal experience, there are times I'm weak, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, strong. And he knew that in those moments he needed to call on the name of the Lord. And so praise God that he answers our cries, and, and he's always there uh, when we call on him. He's always there to answer and, and let us learn how to hear his voice and know that we know that we know that he's answered. And then there are times when we need to get some rest. We need to get some rest. I'm starting a new book this week, and it's, it's going to be called a... Um, a Survival Manual for Pastors. A Survival Manual for Pastors, Karen. A Survival Manual for Pastors, C.K. and Lisa and, and uh, Jackie and, and um, Ryan and uh, Larry Johnson. And uh, we learn from Elijah that there are times when we're high on the mountain and there are times we're down in the dumps. How many of you have ever been in the pits in the ministry? I mean, you just had a high time in the Lord, and the next day you just can't shake this depression off. You're down in the pits. Uh, 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 people who praise you on Sunday are looking down their nose at you on Tuesday and Wednesday. Been there, done that, ladies and gentlemen, and, and uh, have to run to the rock, have to run to the hills. Years ago, my pastor used to criticize me. He would say, you spent a lot of time in the mountains at that Christian retreat. He said, there are times when you just have to be still and face some of these issues. And I said, well, Pastor, until that time, I'm still going to go to the hills because when I know that I need some rest, when I know I can't handle it, I need to get away for a couple of days and pray unto the Lord. And that was my lifestyle. I'd go to the mountains two or three times a year and spend some time before the Lord. That's how... That's how oppressive the ministry was back then i'm looking back 30 years ago uh 20 years ago 30 years ago and it's even more oppressive now and so pastors need to know when to take some time out when to take a sabbatical when to when to get away from everybody even there are times, Pastor, you need to get away from your family, get away from your family members, get away from your friends, and just uh, have some quiet time with the Lord. A lot of people don't understand that, but uh, I've learned by experience or experientially that this is important. So we're putting together a, a manual for survival for pastors and, and want to teach them some things that will help them to live longer, stay healthier, and stay in the will of God. Okay, chapter 20, Ben-Hadad's boast, and uh, he was defeated, and, and uh, he left the scene. Uh, chapter 21, Naboth had a vineyard. He had a vineyard, and greedy King Ahab wanted Nahab, Naboth's vineyard. And so Jezebel plotted against uh, Naboth and put Naboth to death. And then Jezebel said, okay, there's the vineyard. It's all yours. Uh, but they had to pay a price for that. Chapter 22. Let's turn to chapter 22 of First Kings. Okay, and 
we see here in chapter 22 that Ahab repents. And they continue three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth the Gilead is yours, and we be still, and uh, take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And so a war went on, and um, Jehosh Jehoshaphat is involved in this war. Verse 13, And the messenger that was going to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now. The words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Here's another opportunity in the Bible to see some deception. And kings were deceived. They had their prophets who had prophesied that they would win the battle, and these were lying prophets. But Micaiah said, Hey, I'm not going to tell a lie. If God, whatever God tells me concerning you, that's what I'm going to speak. It's that kind of boldness, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it doesn't make friends with people, but it's that kind of boldness that uh, uh, gets God's will done. And um, the scripture says it's better to obey God than to obey men. Okay, verse 20, and the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Here is God planning, planning Ahab's fall. Ahab was wicked. It was prophesied that he would fall. And now God, who does not forget his promise, is ready to destroy Ahab. So verse 20 of chapter 22, and the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit. Listen to this, verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Ladies and gentlemen, like Job, like Job, we do not know what's coming against us. A lot of these situations we're in, a lot of situations your, 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 your marriage is in, your family's in, your church is in, a lot of, of these situations, we don't know who our enemy is and how the enemy is opposing. The enemy tries to come, divide, and, and split a marriage, split a church family, stop a ministry, stop God from doing what he's planned to do. And look at this, this 21st verse. A spirit came to the throne of God and stood before God and said, I'll persuade Ahab. Listen to verse 22. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him. And prevail also. Go forth and do so. So God gave this lying spirit, ladies and gentlemen, the permission to go and persuade Ahab. Verse 23. Now therefore behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Chenaanah, Went, for, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash the son. And say, this, Thus saith the Lord, Put this fellow in the prison, feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken to me. Woo! And so, and so uh, the prophet Micaiah, who was not afraid to say, Well, thus saith the Lord, the king said, Put this fellow in prison, feed him bread and water, and when I return in peace, I'll deal with him. And Micaiah said, verse 28, if thou return at all in peace. And the Lord, the, then the Lord had not spoken by me. And he said, hearken, O people, every one of you. 
Micaiah challenged them all. If you return in peace, then the Lord has not spoken to me. And that's the way we've got the role, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to obey God and what he says and do what God says, no matter what the cost. So the king of Israel uh, decided to disguise himself in battle, and he tried to dress, dress up to look like Jehoshaphat. And then the Syrians came to try to kill uh, who they thought was the king of Israel, dressed up like Jehoshaphat. And, and, um, and uh, Jehoshaphat cried out, and they didn't kill him, but they discovered where the king of Israel, Ahab, was, and they killed Ahab in battle. Verse 40, and Ahab slept with his fathers. And Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. Now verse 40. Verse 40 says, Ahab slept with his fathers. Now that does not mean, because I want to say this, ladies and gentlemen. I see so many Christians on Facebook. When they hear about somebody die, they put RIP, R-I-P, rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, I, and I don't write RIP to anybody. Okay? If, if, and I see on Facebook when they're celebrating somebody's death, I see people, Christians on Facebook, rip, rest in peace, rest in peace. And then some go as far as say, my father in heaven, my mother in heaven, my brother in heaven, my sisters in heaven. And ladies and gentlemen, because I don't know where they are, a lot of them, I ain't writing rip. Lisa Johnson, I ain't writing rip, rest in peace. And I get this from this for the verse, so Ahab slept with his fathers. And Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. Do not think that because this scripture says Ahab slept with his fathers, that he rested in peace. This is not a rip issue, ladies and gentlemen. Ahab went to hell. Ahab was corrupt. Ahab did not obey the Lord. And, and, and the wages of sin is death, okay? Ahab slept with his fathers. I mean, he died. He died just like his fathers before him died. But I would not write a rip, R.I. peace. I would not say rip, Ahab, rest in peace, because there is no rest in peace in hell. Okay? That's a whole another story. And uh, might get able to take, we might get a chance to take that up at a later time. Verse 50, And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father, and Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. And so we close out 1 Kings 22 with um, Jehoram becoming, becoming the king, Israel still in rebellion, and um, Judah is following closely the example of their northern neighbors, Israel, in rebelling against God. Verse 52, verses 52 and 53 of chapter 22, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. That ends First um, Kings. Next week we'll look at Second uh, Kings, uh, approximately the first twelve chapters, first thirteen chapters for next week. Okay. Are there any questions that you may have concerning this assignment? I did it a little bit differently today because I wanted to spend a lot of time with that 13th chapter of 1 Kings. Any questions? Anything we need to attend to, Jackie? No, not in the chat room. Okay, okay. <laughs> This, this is CK. Mm -hmm. When it says in the Bible they um, rest with their fathers, I interpret that as though uh, that's their physical bodies and not their spiritual bodies. Yes, that that's a good interpretation. That's a good interpretation. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers. In other words, 
he died and he was buried in, in his father's sepulchres or tombs. Um, um, but that does not tell you anything about whether it's Jehoshaphat or Ahaziah or anybody else where they are spending eternity. Right, okay. And one other thing was um, Jeroboam's sin that led Israel away from God. Um, he created those two golden calves and even when Israel turned back to God in the future, they still didn't destroy those golden calves. So he was very destructive for the future of Israel, it seems like. Yes, yes, yes. And we see this in verse 52 of the 22nd chapter of First Kings. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Jeroboam, in creating those two golden calves, set a precedent for future kings of Israel. We're looking at many, many kings who followed his example and worshipped caused Israel, the ten northern tribes, to worship those golden calves. So Jeroboam is um, the one where we attribute the, the backsliding of Israel, the northern kingdom. After Solomon died, Jeroboam became the king, and Jeroboam said, okay, uh, I, he said, and I don't want you all going all the way down to Jerusalem to worship because if you do, you're going to stay there. You're going to honor real Boam. Okay? And so I want you to stay here, here, or you're gods. He made two golden calves. So stay up north up here and worship. Make your sacrifices here. He calls Israel to sin. 250 years later, oh, well, roughly 300 years later, Israel, the northern kingdom, 721 B.C., is carried into captivity into Assyria. And many of those captives, their descendants, never, ever, ever return to Israel. Then Judah, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, saw the example of what happened to northern Israel, and they backslid, despite the fact that among the eight or nine kings of Judah, you had four good kings, Hezekiah, Asa, Josiah, and Jehoshaphat. The rest of them led Israel downhill, and they went the same way that northern Israel had gone, except instead of the Assyrians conquering Israel, uh, Judah, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians conquered Judah um, 250, 250 years after Israel went down, um, Judah fell. And they stayed in captivity for 70 years, and a new generation came out of captivity. Jeroboam led them in the wrong direction. And many of the kings led the people in the wrong direction. My, my, my strong message tonight is to every one of us, obey the Lord. Let us obey the Lord. You're going to get a lot of people tugging on you. A lot of groups tugging on you. Do this, do that. A lot of pressures. Obey the Lord. Okay, any questions, comments? I hope this lesson has been helpful tonight. Can I get an amen from somebody if it's been yes, helpful? Yes, it has. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's ask Dr. Bratton for closing thoughts and Amen. lead us, close us out in prayer. Yes. Um, let us always follow God and be mindful of what he tells us to do. Father God, we thank you for your instruction and guidance. We thank you, Father God, for our leader tonight, uh, Pastor Porter, who has Father God, increase our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, because your word says in all my getting, get understanding. So we thank you, Father. And Father God, we ask that you bless Pastor Carter and Jackie with everything they need, Father God, to move the ministry forward, Father God, and give them the desires of their heart. 
Now, Lord, as we close this Bible study, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise worthy of the king of the universe. And, Father, let us all have sweet sleep. Good night, everyone. And we Amen. Live. Man, praise Amen. God. Thank you, Dr. Jean. Thank you, everybody, for coming on. Lord bless you. Only two more weeks of classes, and you get a little break, okay? So hang in there. God bless you. We love you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.